Hey everyone, how are you doing? It's Patrick from Vicious Computers coming at you today with a new tutorial video. So today's video will be short and sweet. I haven't had new content out in a long time and I have just been like dying to get some new content up. So I figured today is a good opportunity to get a quick video that I think will be helpful for some people out there. So what we're going to be doing is teaching you how to take a Crown XLS Drive Core 2 Series Professional amplifier and have it automatically turn on and off with your AV receiver using the 12 volt trigger. And if you're familiar with external amplifiers, most of those made for home theater have a dedicated 12 volt trigger port so they come on automatically. These professional amplifiers, however, do not. It doesn't mean we can't make it work though. So today I'll show you two different ways for less than $20 to make this work. So here's a demo of what we're going to be accomplishing today. And in the next steps of the video, we'll go over all the details. All right, we'll get things started by going over the back of one of the XLS amplifiers. Over on the left side, over by your power plug, you're gonna see a little opening here that is marked as auxiliary, and it has sleep, ground, and status. Now my amps were bought used, so they didn't come with this. Perhaps a new one would, but I don't think it does. So part of our $20 to achieve this is to just buy some three pin Phoenix connectors. So these are little connectors that have terminals on them. So it makes it easy to add some additional wiring. The first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of show you how the sleep mode works on these. A little extra information. So sleep, ground, status, if we short the sleep and the ground together, it puts the amp in the sleep mode. The status and the ground together work to give you a five volt output. So you can have these amplifiers lighting up an LED or something that's in a different room. So you could technically have a rack of these in one room, wire up a system to have status LEDs in a different room, such as a control room, and know if those amps are turned on and potentially other status elements such as clipping or faults. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna use a simple wire and I'll show you this from the back first and then I'll show you from the front to see what we do. We'll power this amp on manually and it's actually already on right now. And perhaps you'll be able to actually hear this. So I'm just gonna ground sleep and the ground. And that just put the amp to sleep. And we'll move to the other side here. And just by making those two pins connect with one another, the amp will go to sleep. This results in a very nice way to put these amps to sleep mode and prevent any kind of noise from like the speakers when they come on or off. And it also gives you the capacity to lower the amount of electricity used versus leaving them on all the time. Now, how are we going to automate it? Well, in that we'll get a little bit closer to the next piece of our equipment list. All right, so I thought about going in really deep in the woods on this and getting a multimeter out and explaining everything about a relay, but I think maybe it would be better just to kind of cut to the chase. So down in the description will be the links for these products on Amazon, so you can pick one up. And what we're looking at is a very cheap $6 low voltage, low amperage relay that is capable of being triggered by that 12 volt trigger that we have coming from the audio video receiver. To put this together, it was pretty simple. We get our 3.5 millimeter or 1 8 inch mono cable, and it has two wires coming out of it. Red would be our positive, white would be our negative. On the left side of the relay is our input side. From top to bottom, we have positive, negative, and then the trigger side. So hooking up positive and negative will turn this relay on meaning it has power. And then we need to send a positive signal to the last pin here, the third one, and that's what actually activates the relay and turns it on, as in closes the relay. When I say close the relay though, that's how we get over to the last side. So we have a common in the center, and we have a normally open and a normally closed position. So you hook your two connections, in this case for our trigger on the professional amp that we want to short together. If you hook this 
relay to the normally open side, that means in a non-powered state, the relay, the connection would be open, not closed. If you hook it to the normally closed side, when there's no power to the relay, the connection would be closed, aka shorted, and then the opposite becomes true once you power the relay. Normally open will then become closed, and normally closed would become open. So you have the option, depending on your needs, to have the, the relay either open your connection or close the connection. Since we have the professional amplifier going to sleep when we short it, we want the relay to be closing our connection when we power it on. So we hook our two connections to the common in the center and then the normally open side. So that way when we power this on, it will close the connection. On the side of our Phoenix connector, again, we're just doing ground and the sleep pin. These two wires on this side don't, don't have any relative importance. I can switch these two wires on this side, I can switch these two wires on that side, because we're just simply shorting those two connections together. However, if you have multiple amps, and this is one of the nice things about doing it this way, I can daisy chain off of this connector an additional two wires to go to another amp, and then another two wires off of that one to go to an additional amp. You can easily hook up 100 amps with this one relay and have them all come on or go to sleep at the same time. Just make sure you don't cross these two wires up your chain. The ground wire always needs to be connected to the next ground wire and the sleep wire always needs to be connected to the next sleep wire. So I can go ahead and plug this back in and give you a demonstration of what the relay does when it's working. Currently with the receiver off, there is no power to this relay. So we'll go ahead and turn it on and also try to get in focus. Once I turn on the receiver, the red light indicates that we have power and the green light uh, is what's telling us the relay has been activated. If I was to pull one of these two wires out that's sending our positive signal to the action, then the red light would remain on because the relay still has power as in the board is powered up, but the relay would deactivate. So if I pull this out, well, I have those two lights backwards. Green is showing that we have power and red shows that the relay is activated. So you can see, activate the relay, deactivate the relay. Normally open, normally closed. Again, you can have either behavior based on that. So take a look in the uh, description of the video, find the parts list. If you already have a trigger cable, you can cut that off of your parts list. If you already have Phoenix connectors, you can cut that off your parts list. The relay alone is only $6, and it would give you an easy way to put this project together. And you might want to also spend a little bit extra to get like a project box or something to make that nice and pretty and self-contained. Now we're going to move into the next part of the video where we kind of get into a little bit more information about this project and why it may or may not be the right solution for you. All right, so now we're going to talk about this project as a whole. Like what is the benefit to you and why is this maybe not right for you? When I was looking into doing this project, one of the things I saw posted online was that sleep mode or turning this amp off doesn't truly turn the amp off. It just turns off the output for the amp. Therefore, it doesn't reduce the power consumption, making it pointless. Well, I tested it for myself and I can tell you that that's absolutely not true. Right now, the AVR and the amp are powered up and you can see it's consuming 24 watts of electricity. If I was to turn off the AVR right now and put the amp into sleep mode, we'll see that there's an immediate drop down and it ends up leveling off about 10 to 11 watts of electricity. So we cut our power consumption by more than half. So putting this amp to sleep does actually save you power. However, you have to think, well, if you only have one or two of these, 10 watts isn't that much. And you could leave that on 24 seven without probably worrying about it too much. If you have a rack of eight of these, 80 watts running all the time, I mean, that might be something to think about and maybe you want to think of an alternative ways of doing this. What are the alternative ways? Well, you can use what I'm doing right now in my current setup and get yourself a smart switch that will turn on and off the actual outlets 
and that will turn off all power to the amps, and therefore they will use zero watts of electricity. But the negative to that is, it's not necessarily gonna be in sync with your AVR depending on how you're doing that. And on top of that, you may potentially get some kind of noise when you power them off, like some kind of thump. I have not had that happen very often, and when it has happened, it hasn't been loud enough to scare me or worry about damaging equipment, but it's something to think about. In addition to that, having the smart switch turn everything off, if you don't know if your amp has what they call a soft start or a soft shutdown, you know, or if you're worried about having power just hammered on and off to your device thinking it might ruin the life of the product, then this project here, turning the amp into sleep mode instead of powering it off, is your solution. If you're less worried about that, then you can always get a smart switch that has power sensing for one master outlet and then that will kill the power to the sub outlets. So that's what I currently have configured right now and we'll go move into the, the living room so I can show that to you. All right, so here we are in my living room right now with my current setup and I am running two Crown XLS 1002 amps for my front sound stage. So the LCR is all powered by those amps down there in the center. And I bought a $20 smart switch that I have the AVR plugged into. And when the AVR comes on, it will give power to the amps. This means they use no electricity. But again, if you're worried about powering on and on, on and off devices without having a soft start of some sort, that's something to keep in mind. Also, my AVR used to be on my UPS in case the power went out and now it's not because it's on the smart switch. Something I had to lose to make this change. Alexa. Turn on entertainment. Alexa, turn off entertainment. So that's how it's working for me right now and I haven't had any issues with it. I really do like these Crown XLS DriveCore 2 amps. They work really well for home theater. Tons of power for relatively cheap. You have the input sensitivity switching, so you can lower the input sensitivity to work with more AVRs that don't have pro level output. Just gobs of power for days. So if you have hard to drive speakers and you wanna to try to get into external amplification without spending a ton of money, maybe look into them. They work well for me. So that's gonna be everything for today. I try to make it short and quick. I didn't wanna to get too, too, too technical, especially because I'm running this solo right now, just trying to get something out there for you guys to watch and also be helpful for those looking for this kind of information. If you have questions or you need more details, feel free to ask those down in the comment section and I'll answer that for you and everybody else. And if you uh, decide to uh, come up with some new ideas, feel free to share them with me. Once again, this was Patrick from Vicious Computers and I'll see you next time.